at least I want to introduce my girlfriend right there. You know, I'm going to be doing, I'm the mouth from the south that's going to be doing some talking here today. But uh, this is my girlfriend, Nancy. Uh, she's also my wife of 55 years. Amen. She's my ministry partner and my best friend. So, big man, I'm her man. God's got the plan, understand? <laughs> Hallelujah. My friends, uh, it's been an extraordinary time, I think. Uh, can I hear an amen? amen. Uh, the praise and worship has ministered to me so deeply. You know, we were the leaders of a, a large 600 member prayer group over in Florida and and uh, all these years now, we have been working in the mission fields, and we, we don't have a prayer group. <laughs> and we, we don't have that community like you beautiful people have here. So I just can't tell you how this has ministered to us here. I, I know my girlfriend here, she's, gonna, she's very happy now. <laughs> she loves her praise. No matter how much praise and worship you have, it's never enough for her. <laughs> she always wants more and things. So, you know, I think we can all agree that, that uh, we've been in a time of visitation. God has been doing something here with us. You know, God does, uh, uh, always has a purpose for whatever he does. And I believe that our coming here was a part uh, of the purpose and plan of God for all of you here in this community and us as well. Amen? Amen. And I believe what he was doing, he was cleaning us all up uh, for the next move of the Holy Spirit that's going to be coming up on the world. And I know that the Spirit has come to us in a special way here in this community, and y'all are a point of light here in this whole, this whole city and even in this whole country, you know. It, doesn't, it takes only one point of light. If you have a big football stadium and it's totally dark and one lightning bug shines in there, you can see it hundreds of yards away, and y'all have become that point of light. And so God wants to empower you. He wants to move you forward. But all of us need to be... Uh, cleansed, if you would, cleaned up a little bit, because God wants to, to entrust you with more of his gifts, more of his power, more of his love, more of his majesty, so that what people see is not you, but they see Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You know, um, the, uh, there's a couple of things that I want, we're going to share in just a little bit, a few more stories uh, about what God is doing around the world. Uh, not so much about our ministry, but this, our ministry is what we're familiar with, so we're going to share it, but it's all God. It's all about God. Amen? Amen. It's not about us or our ministry. It's about Jesus Christ and what he's doing in the world. You know, the, the, the thing I want to kind of start with is um, it's a, a couple of uh, scriptures. In, in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, uh, we are told that everyone has been given a measure of faith. Amen? But then again, the scripture tells us in another place in scripture that some of the, uh, Jesus came to, upon his apostles, and they had been trying to cast out a demon, but they were unable to cast out that demon. And so Jesus walked up to him, and they said, you know, Master, what, <laughs> why is this not working? You know, he said, oh, ye of little faith. If you had faith even the size of a mustard seed, you could say to a mountain, be cast into the sea, and it must go. But, you know, that raises somewhat of a conflict in my mind. Okay, if we all have a measure of faith, and a mustard seed is the very smallest measure that there is, you know, there seems to be a contradiction there. But there is no contradiction. You see, even an atheist, every member of the human race has been given a measure of faith. It's the kind of faith that you use when you flip a light switch, thinking the lights are going to come on, when you turn the ignition on a car, when you put a seed in the ground, thinking that, a, that something's going to grow out of that, there's going to be food. Every, it's how the, the preservation of the species has come about. So that's a gift that God gives us, even though we don't always recognize it. But it's always, God has always given us a, a, a vessel, if you would, to come closer to him. Even people that don't know Jesus Christ, even though that don't know God and his power and his majesty, that's another invitation from them. That's a gift of faith. But there's another special faith that we, this community, uh, that all of us here want today. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It's called the gift of faith. Amen. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's what God wants to pour out in increasing amounts for all of us here. You know, faith can be increased. Faith comes by hearing and what is heard is the word of God. Amen. So what God wants to do today is to build us up to increase our faith. And so what we want to do is to share a few stories about God's power and his majesty from the, from the word of God. Now, particularly, I want to start off, I don't normally share this, these particular gifts here, 
But uh, we have been uh, going through the five keys. And so one of the powerful gifts that's very helpful uh, when you're ministering people in the five keys or any type of, of healing ministry is it's words of knowledge, uh, words of wisdom. Amen? All tied to the prophetic charisms and things. And I want to share these, these with you. We were, we were uh, in the New Orleans at the, the Superdome. And there was a particular uh, priest that was giving a talk uh, on uh, deliverance in, in one of the meeting rooms, Father Emile of France. He was uh, the head of a, 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 a center, called center for the Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so I wanted to get to that, to that meeting because he's a very powerful speaker. And so as I was going along, I was the director for the Charismatic Renewal Office for the Diocese of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. As I was going along, I heard a voice, Lloyd, Lloyd. And I knew that if I stopped, I might miss the talk. And so I was acting like I was, y'all can see I'm not such a good guy. <laughs> so I just, I kept going right there. But this lady chased me down and grabbed me. Lloyd, Lloyd, would you, would you come pray for this, this lady over here? She's got a heart problem. And so I, I intended to say, go over there. You know, guys, please don't take me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner. Amen. <laughs> Saved by the mercy and grace of God. So I was just going to say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Okay, and walk my way. But as I reached my hand out to, to pray for this lady, I heard God tell me, tell her she needs to be reconciled with her sister. I began to argue with God. You know, you can't argue with God. Uh, and then I tried to cut a deal with God, you know. But you can't cut a deal with God. And uh, so I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do it. But that day I was just a smidgy uh, faithful. Amen. And so I said, you know what? I don't know what it means but I feel like you need to be reconciled with your sister. Oh, my goodness. It was like a floodgate. Ah! And I'm saying, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. Ah! She cried. She sobbed. She cried. She sobbed. And finally, she calmed down enough. She began to tell her story. She says, 50 years before this, on her wedding day, her fiancé ran off with her sister on her wedding day. And she has not talked to her sister in 50 years. And her sister was dying in a nursing home over in Slidell, Louisiana. So I led her over to a bank of telephones, and we called and made an appointment for her to go meet with her sister that they might be reconciled. My friends, the point I wanted to make with you, I almost blew it. I almost blew it. Salvation of people were on the line, and I was more interested in my agenda than God's in agenda. Sometimes we're more uh, worried about whether or not we're going to look foolish in front of the eyes of other people if you say a word. But my friends, I'm going to encourage you by the grace of God that if you're praying and God gives you a word or a vision, that you work on that. You don't have to say, you know, in the name of God, you know, you know I don't know what this means, but, you know, you can do it a very gentle a very loving way. Amen? Another one is, uh, show a little bit of my embarrassment on this one. We were sitting in, in church. Now, we were living in Florida, and I, uh, I'm a fisherman, and I had a, a 24-foot Grady White boat with twin 140 engines, and I, we went diving every weekend along the reefs and the wrecks. And so that morning, we had people from out of state joined us to go, and I took them diving. And so the only mass was at 5.30 in the, in the whole diocese, and it was at a, a church called St. Jude. And I hated St. Jude because the way it was configured, when, when anybody says something, it went, meow, 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 meow. It was like coming at you from 10 different directions. It was very hard to hear the message of the gospel. And so I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden, this girl came in through one of the far doors. She was not very heavily dressed. Uh, uh, she was very skimpily dressed, and uh, God had been very generous to her. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, you know, this younger generation, you know, they come in here, they don't have any respect for God, don't have any respect for his church. You know, I don't even know why they would even come to this church. You know, I'm just berating her from over here. So she walked all the way around the church, all the way over here, and she sat down next to me. <laughs> now, my good German wife here, she doesn't like me looking at pretty girls. 
So I was sitting there, I was sitting there, and I'm not looking at this girl. I'm not looking at it right here. And all of a sudden, I think God said, tell her I love her. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, God. I, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do Tell her I love her. Oh, no, God. And so here again, I, I began to try to negotiate with God a little bit, okay? I said, you know, at the sign of peace, if she's still there, I'll tell her then. And so at the sign of peace, she was looking another way, so I quickly dropped on my knees very holily and prayed, you know? And, uh, but you know, God was not going to let me off. Tell her I love her. And I said, okay, God, at the end of the church, in the end of the service, if she's still there, I'll tell her then. So the priest had the dismissal. The service was over, and I prayed an extra long time. I was very holy that day, Joe. I kept praying and I praying and I praying. And so I kind of looked up, and she was still there. So I said, I don't know if this means anything to you, but I think God says, ask me to tell you that he loves you. She began to cry. She said, you know what, I've not been to church in about 10 years, and I was over on the beach, and I know I'm not dressed right for church, but she said, I knew if I went home, I would never come back. She says, you don't know what it means to me to know that God loves me. Folks, I almost blew it again in my arrogance, my pride, but my friends, God wants his people to be set free. He will use all of us in this room. Amen. Amen. We just need to walk in the Holy Spirit. Share a, a couple of healing stories with you. We were in Kenya, and the churches are too small, so what we'll always do is we'll build like a wooden platform outside. We'll have a music ministry. We'll be praising God, and then we'll do a healing service. And so it was a beautiful day, and uh, probably hundreds, maybe a couple of thousand people came, and God were, showed up big time. People were being healed and touched. People, the marriages being restored. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. And the day was all over, and I was leaning up against the wooden platform, and I was talking with some of the conference organizers. And all of a sudden, here come a, a lady with her teenage daughter. And she says, sir, would you pray for my daughter? Oh, yeah, you know, I got the power of God on me. <laughs> you know, I'll pray for this person here, you know. And he said, my daughter is deaf. We've taken her to three different doctors over in Nairobi. And she has no eardrums. Her eardrums have been destroyed by, by uh, infection when she was young. Suddenly, man, my faith went, yeah, boom. And I'm thinking to myself, what can I do for this girl? But again, that day... I had a little bit of faith. And so I didn't know what to do exactly, but I knew in the Bible that Jesus stuck his fingers in, this, in someone's ear and says, be open. So and I said, be open in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. You hear again, you would have thought I slapped the girl. She began to cry and cry and scream and holler. And I'm, I was looking for something to crawl under. Uh, I, I mean, I, was, I, I, I said, Lloyd, you fool. You hurt that little girl. Her ears were all tender, and you stuck your finger in the ear. You hurt her. She began to sob, Mom, Mom, I can hear. They took her back to the doctor in Nairobi. He said, I don't know what happens, but she has two brand-new eardrums. Amen. I want to quote some of these things to you because I'm not a big man, okay? I don't feel like I have a healing ministry, but God has a healing ministry, amen? And I'm a part of the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's the only ministry in the church is a ministry of Jesus. We all participate differently. And also, it's not like I have huge faith. But, you know, the Word of God says, whatever city or village you go into, heal the sick, cast out the demons, and proclaim that the kingdom of God is at hand, amen? So I was trying to be faithful to the Word of God. Amen.